thought leadership has been described as crystallizing your knowledge in a way that you can impart to your audience and they can use it. You led AONL as its president during one of the most curious times in its history. Describe that experience for us and tell us what you learned, the knowledge you gained, and um, that the audience can use. Well, thank you, David, and thank you for everyone for being here today, and thank you to MT for that uh, nice introduction. Um, it is, I hope everyone's having a great uh, conference. Uh, I think it's been just outstanding so far. And so, um, yeah, so uh, who knew we were going to have a pandemic, right? <laughs> Um, and boy, um, I remember the day that the pandemic was, you know, called um, uh, officially. And I remember in the next several hours, Robin Bagley and I being on the phone because um, we had our big conference in March coming up, right? We were supposed to be in Nashville celebrating, doing all the great things we do in Nashville and all that. And that really was like the first decision I had to really um, participate in as the president of AONL. And, you know, gosh, when, you know, really when it came down to it, uh, you know, we had to rethink and, and set our priorities and, and go by our priorities, right? The first priority was keeping people safe. And what we knew at the time was that um, in order to keep people safe, we had to not be present with one another. And we had, to, we had to take the knowledge that was already there, like we do every day in our practice, and apply it. So it was kind of a really awkward situation, right? So here's the president and the CEO canceling the conference. Kind of awkward, right? And then we had to start thinking about what, um, you know, how were we going to navigate through this? Was this pandemic, you know, going to be a couple months or, we, you know, was this, you know, was it really a pandemic, right? We didn't even know. So, you know, I guess a, a lot of the, um, uh, the lessons or thoughts really were things that we sort of do every day as leaders, right? It is about priority setting. It's about thinking about how you get the job done when the circumstances change. You know, how adaptable you are, how flexible you can be uh, in different uh, situations because so we didn't just have a conference, right? We had all of the work of the AONL team, which was managed by our COO at that time. We did a great job, Matt Fenwick. But then we had all of the work that the board needed to continue to do in order to make our organization effective. And so that whole switch to the virtual board, I feel like I was the, I was the virtual president, right? Uh, we all were, have been virtual for a couple of years, but the flexibility and the ability to adapt during those times, I think, was just um, extremely, extremely important. And, um, you know, uh, thank uh, I thank uh, God that we had technology to help us to do that, right? Because just imagine if we didn't, how difficult uh, that would be. So how we took what we had and changed how we did our work became really important. And I think that was uh, probably one of the biggest things that each and every one of us did in our organizations, right? We had to rethink how we did our work and how we accomplished things. But, you know, so um, it also during this time just reinforced the incredible opportunities we had within our, with our teams, right? Because our, all of our teams, uh, you know, really uh, stepped up to do work differently. That happened, up, happened uh, with our board. That happened with the team and the staff of AONL. Uh, because we, uh, during this time, did incredible things, right? We had two annual virtual conferences. We continued fellowships. They just became virtual. We had to learn how to interact and accomplish our work in a different, uh, in a different way. And as nurses, that should probably not be a surprise to us because we're like the best innovators, right? In whatever situation uh, there is, it, it was just a new set of experiences. You know, I think um, uh, for me, in, in addition, uh, one of the things that I had the opportunity to do as uh, the nurse, uh, as a nurse leader, was really to help even in a broader fashion with the American Hospital Association, uh, because they at that time had the need in order to be able to provide resources and to form hospitals on what to do and how to have how to help navigate through this pandemic. So I got to serve on a national task force, and we drafted the tools, the materials, the systems and processes for people to be able to use, whether it was infection prevention practices, 
how to manage your staffing, how to look at risk management, what legal things do you have to consider, what do you have to do with facilities. These were needs across our country because not every hospital had the resources to be able to, uh, in um, you know, be able to um, you know implement. And so that ability to serve in a broader fashion was a real incredible opportunity, and I think. Uh, a great place for a nurse to help to serve because I was the nurse with all the other um, healthcare leaders there supporting that. You know, I think in addition during this time, I'd have to say this is where you think about how you take the opportunity to do things uh, that perhaps are on your agenda that you haven't accomplished. And so one of the things you've heard is that, oh, I got to serve two years as a president. Well, actually, we've been thinking about that as a board. Um, we have been trying to think about how, how do the roles on the board help us uh, to continue the work that uh, we do as an organization. And one of the gaps that we actually had was that the board president term was one year. And, and most other national nursing boards, the, the, the terms are different, they're longer. That helps with continuity, it helps with ongoing planning, activities, all the accomplishments you can. So guess what? We took the opportunity. Uh, we also knew that we had a very tired workforce also and that people weren't gonna be up for an election. We heard that, you know, right. So the timing was right, we took the opportunity. Uh, you know, help ask people to serve in different ways and longer terms, and we changed the bylaws in the midst of all that in addition. So we got a lot of other things accomplished. So I think that's a key learning. So in, the, in, this, uh, in, the, in a time where there is a lot of uncertainty, what other opportunities do you have? And how do you align um, the, uh, uh, you know, align the ability to uh, take advantage of those? We also knew, um, that uh, during this time, we had a great opportunity to try to better understand what our nursing leaders were experiencing, right? And how, um, how did we need to document that, understand that, and plan for the future? So we had a great partner who wanted to help us in Jocelyn Marketing. So I hope many of you participated in the longitudinal study. Uh, that we were able to complete over this time. We completed three um, uh, rounds of that, and we've, been, we've learned incredible information about what early on were the challenges in the pandemic, where, um, where we were going through it, how things changed, and then now, where are people? Where are our leaders? Guess what? They're exhausted, right? They need support. We understand now how we need to help uh, um, direct resources in order to continue to help people uh, manage through this time because we're, we're listening and learning. I'll stop there because <laughs> I could go on. It was an incredible experience and I just have to tell you, uh, first of all, I, uh, obviously none of us ever dreamed this, right? I never dreamed I would be the president of an organization, but it was incredibly, um, it was a, an opportunity of a lifetime for me. And, and I can't tell you how much I really appreciate the membership of AONL really allowing me to serve. I really, really had a great time. There are a few members of the board that you were president of in the audience today, and I think we can all say thank you for your inspirational leadership. It was developmental for us um, to be able to learn um, from your example, so thank you. Thank you. You uh, talked about the ability to serve and your service with AHA in addition to AONL. Um, but at the time, you were also at the helm of an academic, um, premier academic medical center as the chief nurse executive. Um, as, as leaders, we have to remain energetic. And um, how do you face the challenge of remaining energetic despite multiple demands? And, and what advice do you have for our audience? So um, I'm going to thank you for that, David. So all my Duke teams stand up. <laughs> stand. Stand. That's my energy, right? So um, and this is, these are a couple handfuls of my leaders from across our organization, but I derive my energy from the people I work with and that I serve. And every single day, our leaders stepped in, did what they needed to do, were flexible, um, accommodating, built new things, did whatever it took, right, to help us get through this pandemic. That's where I get my energy. Uh, because helping, uh, helping others, we can, we can do anything. And as nurses, we know we can do anything, we do that. Now, 
Was I exhausted? <laughs> oh my gosh, was I exhausted? Um, but you know, um, uh, when when at the core of what you do is keeping people safe, you have to do what it takes to keep your patients safe, their families safe, and your team safe. And if you don't keep your team safe and, and address their basic needs, you can't, they, we, you won't accomplish the others. So for um, you know, being able to um, help one another at, during that time uh, was tremendous. And I give credit to my team for the energy that I actually uh, was able to continue to have uh, and continue to have during the, during the pandemic. You know, I, I think if, I, if there's some other words of wisdom there, one of the things uh, that I think since we had so much change, you know, understanding where you didn't have to change something, which gave people more control, I think was really helpful. And I'll tell you a, a story that um, maybe it's one of my regrets. <laughs> uh, well, it probably is. So um, during that, this time, in, in early on in the pandemic, when you know, we were changing infection control practices like every day, right? Um, I had a new office assistant who was hired. And she came in, she's a wonderful woman, you know, gracious, whatever. Well, she started changing everything in my office. Everything, and one I didn't know about it. Not that you need to know about everything, but when you need to rely on different things, coming in and having something not be where it is, or there's a new process, I about lost my <laughs> mind. And so understand your triggers and know how to manage them. It's a really important thing because, um, and, but it, you know, when you think, when, it, when you go back and you translate it to, the, to your staff, right? What's in their control? What can they keep in their control so that they know every single day they can rely on that? Because we all went back to basic needs when you think about some of the uncertainties in the, in the pandemic. That was just my simple story in my office which actually drove me out of my mind. So <laughs> what you can control, you let people control. So, um, and then, you know, this is a great time to um, uh, provide stretch assignments, right? To delegate um, different types of things to people who wanted a new opportunity, who wanted uh, to learn something new. You know, I know my leader of infection, or my quality nursing leader, Mary, in the back. She is an infection preventionist by training. We had no system level infection prevention in our health system. Well, guess who became that? Mary, and you know, and, and she stepped into a much bigger, broader role because one, we had the opportunity, she wanted to do it, and, and it preserved others' energy from having to worry about that. So it wasn't just about mine, it was like, here, how do you, how do you help others grow? How do you use their talents? How do you um, make sure that you get all of the different things that you um, accomplished? And you know, um, at the end of the day, for me personally, uh, one of the things I had to do in order to maintain my, because you can say, oh, that's all about work. What did you do uh, personally? Um, I, my husband and I rescue animals, and we have dogs. And if I didn't go home every day and interact with my dogs, not so much my husband, but my dogs, <laughs> um, well, <laughs> and take them for a walk and play, and just do something that made me feel refreshed. I had to do that. I hope every, each and every one of you figured that out for yourselves in addition. Uh, but that's how I maintained energy. Uh, Marianne's husband's a pediatric neurosurgeon, so I can imagine rather spending times with the dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a delightful man. He really is. Um, talk to Don't us about tell him that, though. <laughs> talk, to him, talk to us about sir, uh, your passion for serving the profession at the national level. You talked about never dreaming of being in an organization's president. Um, you, you served as a board member and then president. Where does that passion come from? What, what factors do you think made you successful as AONL's president and, and through your service on the board? Yeah, so thank you for that question, uh, David. So I went back and thought about this and I was like, God, where does, where, you know, where does this come from? And I actually, I just thought, you know, what, why did I want to become a nurse, right? And because that's really, for me, what it's about. I'm a nurse and nurses can do anything, right? We have so many opportunities and there are so many needs. Right? It's, a, it, it's a challenge for us to a certain extent, but it's a great opportunity. And you know, I decided when I was younger to become a nurse because it was a profession where people could help one another. And I got that from my parents. 
And uh, because when I grew up, my parents were always helping other people. My mother necessarily wasn't in healthcare, but she was engaged in all different types of community activities. She was always out volunteering, doing something for someone else. Or she was taking care of someone in our local area who needed food or support or you know whatever. She was always serving somebody. And then my father, actually, when I grew up, was a volunteer fireman. And, uh, and, um, and served like as an EMT paramedic, you know, in the rescue squad and all that. And I watched him for years, you know, run out of the house at all hours of the night, all hours, uh, all hours of the day, to put out fires, to rescue people, to help them uh, in different ways. And, um, and that's where I got that from. And so it's like in my career, what could I do to help people? You know, what really could I do to help people? And there was no better decision than to become a nurse. So that's where my passion comes from. And, um, and at that time, they didn't let you become a volunteer fireman if you were a woman. <laughs> so now you can, but all my brothers were. So it like, it's like embedded in my family. But anyway, not to get off on that. But the, um, so uh, that's where my basic passion came from, right? And then every day, you work with wonderful people. Um, and, but there's a bigger, broader world outside our daily work, right? And uh, in order to, for us to really build upon our profession and what our profession needs, you've got to step outside. You step outside to your local, regional uh, organizations to see how you can serve. I did that in different ways in a clinical specialty. I'm an oncology nurse by training. So all my initial passionate outside of work was all in oncology, locally and then nationally. And then when I became a chief nurse, I thought about ways that I could serve in different ways. And, um, and that's where my national uh, focus uh, actually uh, came from. What made me successful, I think, during that time or this time, um, I hope I'm not, I hope I continue to be successful, if you would, um, is um, you know, trying to take on a broader view, right? Trying to understand that even though we have an issue in front of us, there are many bigger things to focus on, right? I think we heard that from uh, Tim Porter O'Grady yesterday. Uh, in addition, um, when we think about our profession, so how do we each continue to use the skills that we have to support our profession is a big uh, reason. I think in addition, being inclusive, right? Having the, the broader diverse opinion in the room helps us to be much more um, uh, successful, uh, you know, making sure that we engage others in a very, very broad way. That's, so the decision making can't be top down. Decision making has to be bottom up with some leaders and leadership and some vision, and and just really recognizing that you can't do it alone, right? It, it takes a team. It takes all of us uh, with all of our special skills and talent uh, in order to um, have that impact that we want to have. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much.